like uh, nice beveled edges on the actual wood because you guys know one of my pet peeve hates is really sharp edges unless you're making a game that's the only time I give you a pass on a sharp edge on anything because uh, in real life there are no really sharp edges to anything everything is smooth worn uh, so I like the wearing you've got going on here on the table no, it's looking cool. Really cool. Uh, I can see the, the, the window frame here. So, yeah, no, it's looking cool. Very nice. Like I said, I'd like to see a high quality render. But the texturing you've got going on so far is looking great. And yeah, my only criticism was the background there. Whatever that plane or dune or whatever it is looks a bit high, that's all. Uh, that and... The background image you've got going on here may be a bit low res. Looks a bit blurred. Um, but it's a work in progress, so I don't want to uh, nitpick too much. But it looks great. Really great. Thanks for popping in and showing it too. Like I said, guys, I love looking at the stuff you're making, and it can be anything. You don't have to be a great modeler or anything, um, although that model is great that Nano did. If you're just a beginner and you're still playing with 3D because you should, it's fun. Uh, and, and you know, you're not great, that's fine. Still pop into chat and show your work. Uh, if you want my help on anything, feel free to pop in and ask me. That's why I'm here. So yeah, let's just duplicate this one more time. So yeah, don't feel that you have to create great work or anything. If you're a complete beginner and you know, You've only created a cube or something. That's fine. Uh, Nano says you'll work on the sand and the uh, HDRI. Oh, it's a HDRI you're using. Okay. Is low quality. No, that's fine. But that was the only thing that, that, I jumped, that jumped out at me about the image was just the background. Just looked a bit high. Your sand looks a bit high. And if you're using a HDR image here, then that explains the... Um, the blurry going on in the background. If you don't have a high quality HDR image to use for your background, um, you can still maybe fill up the background there with something else to hide any of the blurry bits. You know what I mean? So put stuff behind your sand layer here in front of the sky to cover up that horizon line. That's just if you don't have a high quality HDR that you can pop in. Hey Sniper Echo, good to see you. We're just looking at an image here that Nano, Nano is creating in uh, Maya and Arnold. I think it was Arnold, yep. <laughs> um, a low quality one, still a work in progress, which is fine. Like I said, I love the uh, design of the lamp and I like the texturing you've got going on. It's looking good. Yeah, it was just the background is too high. The sand is too high. And yeah, like I said, if you don't have a high res high HDRI image, then just cover up the background with other objects along the horizon line. It looks great. And it's good to see you, Sniper Echo. We are just fixing up a few bits and pieces left here on our windows. I forgot to put these window sills in the other day. All right. So we've got our paintings in. And again, um, I went through this with why we created our paintings and the way we've done them here. Again, what we've done is we've created a blueprint because the paintings, again, are made up of... I just want to reiterate this for you guys because it's really important that when you make your assets for any real-time game or any real-time game engine or anything you're using, that you try and save as much poly count and memory as you can to make your game run faster. Um, I'm just looking at my painting here. It looks like it may be skewed a bit, so I'm just going to move that over. There we go. It was sticking outside of the frame. Uh, so what I've done here is I've created... Let's, let's look at this image here. It's a bit easier without the fog going on. I've created a, a panel which is just plaster. Come on. So we've just got a, a, genu a regular plaster panel which goes behind the painting, okay? That's to cover up our brickwork. I've also created just the frame, which is this thing here. 
So just an empty picture frame. And I've done that so that we can reuse it over and over again, uh, anywhere else in the, in the building as well. And then I've just created uh, a painting, which is just a plane, two triangles, which contains our picture. Okay. And then I created a blueprint by putting all those pieces together and that just makes it easy for us to move around at our level. Like that. So that's the, the plaster in the background, our frame and our picture. So we can reuse the same object over and over again just replacing the picture in the frame. And then we can also just reuse the frame on its own inside the building somewhere else on some of the walls if we want to put more paintings up. So we're just reusing the same assets again and again. We do that so that we uh, make our engine as fast as possible. All right, so we have three paintings here above our doors. We just need one more above, above the back door. So, oh, too far. So let's pull the last painting in, which will be, I think it's this one up here. Better just check that. I want to make. I don't want to make sure I'm not using the same painting that I've already used down here. No, no that's cool. Let's rotate it around ninety degrees. And let's move it up above our door. Right now this door is obviously this back section of the uh, building uh, is a little differently shaped than the front and that makes sense because the back of our building here is a even though it looks similar to the front it's actually a bit different like we don't have our two side doors here we have windows uh, so the, the, the blueprint we created for the front doorway is obviously too small here for the back but we can still use this again by double clicking our blueprint to go into sub object mode. We'll start with the plaster in the background. Let's scale that up. And this is the other great thing about blueprints. Um, even though you've made a blueprint, you can still go in and change it up. Just going to deselect it, reselect it, and move our, bl our uh, blueprint back a bit because it's going through our uh, top of our door here. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't fix the brightness. It still should be the same as it always was. Sniper Echo, the Twitch stream brightness. Is it looking brighter? It may be because of the fog that's going on in this scene. It looks a bit brighter here because it's fogging up. I have to adjust the fog in, in the level. Is the uh, brightness w uh, worrying you guys? Do my, does my stream look way too dark for you? I know that when I watch it back on Twitch, it does look dark compared to what I see. Um, and I, I, I can play around with that if it's a problem for you guys. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. But I've noticed is what I've noticed is when I redo my videos and upload them to Twitch, that that the, the brightness is much brighter, and that's the way I see it on my screen. It just seems to be when OBS or Twitch convert my video signal, it tends to make it very dark. But if that's a problem for you guys, I can certainly play around with um, OBS and uh, brighten up the screen because OBS has um, filters now that you can apply to everything. So if it I think what you're seeing here is the fact that there's a bit of a fog, bit of fog in the scene here, which is brightening up the entire image. If I uh, go back over here, maybe like that, that's probably more the way you're used to seeing it. It's the fog, though. You see, as I rotate my camera around, 
uh, it lightens up because there's fog in in the scene. I think that's what, probably what you're seeing here. Uh, but I do want to make sure it's not too dark for you guys. So if if you find if let me know if you, if my screen if my stream is too dark, I'll change it. Okay. Like I said, I don't want I want you guys to watch the stream. I don't want it to be too dark for you. I have noticed it's darker when I watch back my VOD on Twitch than what I see here and what my videos that I upload are. Um, yeah. Again, I don't know what the whether it's Twitch that does it or whether it's OBS that does it, but I can certainly look at it. But if it's if it's if it's a problem, if it's turning into a problem for you guys, I can certainly look at changing that up. Uh, that will just mean though that when I do my video records and upload them later on, it'll be too bright for me. I'll have to adjust it back down. But I'm happy to do it if that uh, is something that's bothering you guys. The fact that my stream is a bit darker than it should be, than what I see anyway. Um, I'm going to double click that again. I should not have moved that. I think it was right the way it was. So we have our paintings above our doors now. I just wanted to add paintings above the doors. Let's go back to the front where we can see the other three together. Uh, I just wanted to add the paintings to add some interest to our doorway. Yeah, again, you see how it's light on that side and dark on that side. That's the fogging. The fog makes it lighter because it's way too high at the moment in the, in the environment. But we'll adjust all of that at the end because uh, these lighting adjustments are better done once you get all of your assets together in one spot. And that's what we'll do. We'll wait till we've got everything pretty much completed and then we'll start playing with our fog values and our lighting to get it perfect. But yeah, if you, if you see me turn the camera, it's light on that side, dark on that side, that's the fog. <laughs> but if my streams are too dark, do let me know and I'll make some adjustments to it. All right, so we have our paintings all ready to go above our doors. Now, we've also got all of our railing sections in now. Where are we? So they're all ready to go. Um, apart from the railing, I want to place on this side of the wall, which is just going to be a single railing, which I haven't made yet. We'll just start do that later on. We've got a few things we can work on up here. We have to uh, panel the walls. Um, but let's, before we do that, work on this bit here. I realized I needed to uh, place a couple of decorative wooden pieces through the top here. I forgot to put them in, so now let's do that. And they are not a blueprint. They're going to be the first time I see a lot of these assets since we made them, you know, way back four or six weeks ago. So I'm interested to see what they all look like together. This one here. Let's pull that in. Yeah, the engine's just a bit slow. This is the first time we've used this asset. Did it bring it in or not? No, I don't think it did. Let's try it again. There we go. And this is actually the first asset we worked on, I think. At the very beginning, when, we, when I was redoing the assets for this level, I think I started with this. So yeah, quite a while ago. Let's rotate it around. Uh, and we're going to be using this here and also up on the second level. Or reusing it, I should say. Again, the scaling is going to be off because we scaled our building up, so we're going to have to make some adjustments to our scale. But I'll get it positioned first and then we can work on that.
All right, now I know I need about three of these along the top here. So what I'm going to do before I start scaling anything is I'm going to duplicate this twice more. And again, they've been designed to go next to each other. We're going to select the three of them and move them in around the middle. And now I'm going to scale them up as a, a set. And I'm doing that so I can get them big enough until they just touch the sides on either side. want to deselect them. are going to be hidden of course by we're going to have curtains through the front here but we will of course see them from the back oh. so that's all good and we're going to be reusing them up on this level as well along the top through here and also in through this back hallway I'm just pulling back into the corner here to check the colouring to make sure it's all okay because it's the first time I've used these assets since I made them. I think this one needs to come over just a little. It's hard to see here. I don't know if you can see it on stream, but there's I can see a line sort of shimmering through the middle here. And that means that one of them needs to come over just a touch. back and check the color. I think the color is looking fine. What I'm looking for here is a match between the color of the railings, the color of that, and a similar color to, to our banister, uh, to our wall sections here as well. It's going to do a save all so that we don't lose the work we've just been doing. <clears throat> Cold coffee, yeah. Um, let's see, what will we do now? Um, actually, let's look at these wall panels here. I know we've already placed them, these, these sections. Now, I was looking at them over the weekend and you remember initially I said I wanted to change them up and I haven't really done that from the original. They're still pretty much the same as they always were. Uh, and what was concerning me looking at them here is you see how wide or narrow our wooden wall sections are compared to these plaster sections. These plaster ones are much bigger and, and wider than our wall ones. Now it's a different object and you could say, well, that's okay. And it is okay. Um, I was just thinking it may be better or look better if they were more narrow. And remember, we can't scale these ones in because what we're going to end up doing is making this center square bit look really weird. It's going to be really long and narrow. Uh, that and, the, and also the border here. I didn't really like the border that we have going around the outside. I just thought that was a bit boring. So what I've done here is, and I'm using Max 2018 too, by the way, guys. So any, it seems to be behaving itself. But I was using it over the weekend for the studio and it was behaving fine. So again, anyone that was using Max 2017 or 2018 and the program is hanging for them, make sure you update to the latest version of the NVIDIA drivers. I'm not using the hotfix, which they released about a week ago. I'm using 
the version, the proper Wickle version, or WHQL from NVIDIA, the latest one that was released on July, June 29. That driver seems to have fixed the crashing that Max was having. Uh, they were working with Autodesk to fix it, so they seem to have, have, have uh, fixed that problem the, of Max crashing. So if you were if you were using 2016 like I was, which I use all the time anyway because I sold my stuff and I need to be able to save back to version 2013. Uh, I was using 2016 though because Max was crashing. Max has been fine with the latest drivers. So for any of you guys that were holding up on using the new version of Max because of crashes, update your NVIDIA drivers and you should be good to go. What I've done here is I've created a, another panel that's more narrow. That's our original in the background, which I've also changed the frame on, but I also created a narrower version here. So we have a, a new frame, a different frame, and a narrower panel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to export this one and bring it into Unreal. And we'll see if this looks uh, better on our wall. So I'll export selected into my... I'll call it panels folder. Again, we're saving as an FBX because uh, Unreal handles FBX very well. And I have to admit, I, I do like what they've done with Max's interface here. They've, they've cleaned up the buttons a lot. It looks, just looks a lot cleaner and a lot more modern. Not, not quite as old fashioned as the other Max version. They haven't changed anything, which is good because as a designer, I don't want them moving crap around. Uh, they just cleaned everything up to make it look a bit nicer and they are using something called QT5 for their viewports now which speeds everything up and I have to admit it really does speed up a lot so now that it actually works and doesn't crash well hasn't crashed yet give it time it probably will uh, max is max let's just import that um, panel that new panel We're just going to have to make some adjustments to our shader before we can use it. Uh, we'll look at our tangent bases in a minute. It's complaining to me there, but we'll, we'll check that out in just a sec. I'm going to open up the um, mesh. And again, the panel is pretty much the same. Uh, except for the frame and the size. I've changed the frame to make it look more interesting, a bit more decorative. And I've uh, made the actual panel a bit more narrow. But we do have to swap out our... Um, some of our textures here, they're not quite right yet, so... Uh, and what it's done is it's reused the... Te it's, it's created three new materials. We don't want that either, because we've already created two of these materials. I'm going to jump into my materials folder. Uh, the panel center is this one here. We want to use that. Uh, again, I'm just going to check what it's doing, what this material is. I think this is the new frame. Yeah, the border. So that one's the border. We need the, uh, I think it's this one here. Yep. And we just want to bring in the uh, other materials for our border, our, like our um, roughness and our metallic and all that type of thing. So let's import those. We've got the color. We need the Metallic, the ambient occlusion, the normal, and the roughness. Let's pull those into our shader. Okay, so it should be metallic, uh, normal. I think this is our roughness. Yep, 
and this will be our ambient occlusion. Okay, so metallic, normal, roughness. And the AO and the occlusion. Save that shader. Okay. Save that model that we've changed up. Now I'm just going to start with this one wall section here. I'm just going to swap it out for the two, for the narrower version and we're going to see what it looks like, whether it looks better or not. Uh, and if it doesn't, then I do have a version that's large like this that we can bring in. And we can probably still reuse that narrower a version somewhere else. This one here. Let's rotate it 90 degrees. That's interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. Let's move it into place. I want to have a look at it before I mention what it is. Uh, no, it's not a big deal. We can change it up pretty easily without having to uh, do much apart from making some changes to a texture. Let's scale it up. Just a little bit more. It needs to come up a little bit more. And now again, it doesn't matter if we don't go right to the floor because we're going to be placing a tiled mesh floor here anyway. Um, and we can always make some small adjustments after the fact. We want to get it about the right size though. Um, I'm going to delete this uh, large panel in the background. Let's push it back so it's actually on our wall. Duplicate it. Scale it back a little bit. And we have more play here with these narrower panels and our scaling as well. Deselect that and pull back. So I can do a comparison between the two smaller panels to the uh, one larger one. Alright, now. I'm going to select that. pick the wrong one. I'm just mirroring it in the Y. to move it over a bit. The only reason I did that mirror was because I wanted to get a better match. 
uh, along our border here. It doesn't matter because it's meant to be two separate panels. So having a line here is fine. You would have a line there because if they're panels that are placed on the wall, they're going to be butting up to each other. So there, there will be a difference. I just did a mirror though to see if we could get a better blend between that. Now the only problem with, with doing a blend like that is we're going to start getting a repeating pattern that you can see here. Uh, and so long as that pattern isn't too noticeable, it would be okay. Sure. I'm just going to undo that. I actually think it's better the way it was without the uh, flip. Anyway, we're supposed to be working out whether we want two panels or one here, which will look better. Um, and the reason I'm thinking about swapping it up is because we need to place some of these uh, lamps, wall lamps along here as well. And we can't really place one of those wall lamps in the middle of a panel because it'll look weird. It's meant to go between the panels like here. Um, which means we really need a, la a light here and a light here. Now, if we use the original panel, because we can't place it in the middle of the panel, we'd have to place it, and, and it would look okay. We could place it on one of the columns on either side. Um, but if we swap them out with two panels side by side, then we can place our wall lamp in the middle. I'm just trying to work out which would be better. What's your opinion, guys? Do you think two panels is better or one large one? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> Just a sec, guys. My phone's going off over here. Oh, a new subscriber. Tamana, is it? Tamana? Thank you very much for the uh, subscription, to Ma Tamana, uh, for showing the love. It's very good of you, thank you. Uh, just as a reminder for you guys that do subscribe, you get all ads removed from the page, you uh, get an icon next to your name in chat, you have the ability to post links in chat, unless you're a regular, like Sniper Echo or Nano. Uh, you, you have immunity to slow mode, you get the ability to speak in sub-only mode. Um, you get access to my previous videos and streams, of course, and uh, you have access to the subscriber-only uh, chat room on the Fulldust 3D server on the Twitch app. As of, of course, you also have access to the, um, the sub-emotes, and the one that you have access to now is the Phil, Fildo Love which will be this one here. So yes, thank you again, Tamana, for the subscription. I really do appreciate it. Uh, it's very good of you. Thank you. All right. So yeah, I'm not sure whether two separate um, panels or one panel is the best way to go here. I hate making decisions. Let me just get back into this corner again so we can have a look from a bit of a distance. Now the reason I was originally placing... Why does my phone keep going off? Stop that. The reason I was uh, placing, replacing it with two tall ones was because of the light and because our panels here are quite narrow as well. And it was just to get con keep some continu continuity between the two different uh, panel types. 
I don't know. I think maybe having two is probably better. It adds a bit more interest to the wall. Uh, two of these decorative squares just makes it a bit more, um, I won't say busy, but just uh, uh, adds more visual interest to the wall than one large panel. Let's do that. Let, let's swap it out for two panels. Um, yeah, there are some sections of the wall here where we could still keep it as one. Where it's more, where it's a bit more narrow, like here, we can still keep one panel. And I do actually like the uh, the change we made to the border. I think this decorative border looks more interesting than just this plain square one. Uh, now, yeah, now what I wanted to mean, I, I'm not going to, I wasn't going to mention it, but you see in our texture here, if I get into a position, you see that line, that square line there? That's actually because we, I'm using the original texture when we still had a square border. And because the texture was made with that square border in mind, it, it's left, um, it's like the ambient occlusion actually in the background, I think, of that border. Uh, so that's something I'm going to have to change uh, just by changing the texture. We can do that though a bit later. It's just a texture swap in the material. We don't have to make any changes to the mesh. So we'll do that. But yeah, uh, here I think we'll try swapping this out for... Well, we need to bring in the uh, the other size for this as well. So let's do that. Let's jump back into Max and pull in this uh, changed panel, which again is the same thing, but just a bit wider. And I do it in Max here as opposed to scaling up too much in uh, Unreal so that we don't uh, alter the size of our square in the middle here too much. Doing it in Max, I can make adju adjustments to the texture. Let's export this one as well. Plus the panel B. Let's import that into Unreal. And again, we're just going to have to swap out the, um, the materials for the ones we've already created. So we want... This one here. This one here. And I don't think I've moved the material from the models folder yet, so it'll be over here. I think it's this one. No, it's not that one. It must be this one. Yes, it is this one. Hey, where did my thing go? I closed it down when I didn't want to. Now this one here. Let's save that. Okay, let's pull in that new plaster panel we just imported, which is this one. Okay, let's scale it up. 